Welcome to the Marina Bay Sands Convention Centre. This year, this is the location of Broadcast Asia 2013. Uh, inside, there is a huge variety of broadcast technologies from around the world. Um, we're expecting it to be a fantastic show. We have a, a lot of technologies on the uh, ideal booth. This video is a brief introduction into the technologies that you'll see on our booth. Um, on the booth, we've got a very strong showing of multiple technologies from Everts Technologies, which uh, includes their MAM system mediator, uh, which includes their view, their visually unified experience, uh, and also includes their playout and automation. Um, so we've got some great technologies which we've already deployed here um, in Singapore. Uh, we also have some of their newer technologies. For the first time in Asia, we're introducing the Dreamcatcher slow motion replay system from Everts Technologies. Um, but Ideal Systems, we work with many, many broadcasters. We have to create solutions for our market, for, for our many different types of customers, from broadcast companies to, to pay TV operators, terrestrial operators, uh, sports production companies. So uh, also with the Everts Technologies, we've got a selection uh, of uh, technologies from uh, companies like ATCI, uh, satellite uh, dishes, satellite technologies um, for Uplink and for Earth stations. Um, we also have uh, Yapku, which is a, a, a transcoding in the cloud and digitization. We've got um, technologies from Blue Lucy Media for ingest. We've got technologies from Zen Data for, for uh, archiving. And technologies like uh, uh, the green boxes from Elemental, this is a, a, in the 4K and the 2K encoding. And uh, we also have engineering technologies uh, such as uh, the rasterizers and the, the uh, uh, analysis tools that come from fabrics. So, um, very strong display of technologies. This is a representative of some of the technologies that we use to create our solutions. Um, this video is really just for uh, if you missed some technologies on the booth or for people who couldn't come uh, to the fantastic Marina Bay Sands facility here. And, and uh, it's really nice on the inside. It's a little bit hazy here on the outside. We've got, we got some smoke blowing in from across the water. Um, but uh, inside, I think you'll find it's an interesting show. Uh, from Ideal Systems perspective, we're uh, the largest broadcast systems integrator in Asia. We've got people coming from our, our Hong Kong office, from our Taiwan office, from our India office, from our Thailand office, and of course a strong showing here from our uh, Singapore office as well. So um, a lot of the main experts with these technologies are here, so I'm going to invite them rather to, to come and uh, introduce their technologies, give you an overview of what the, the fundamental building blocks are from which we make our solutions. So um, I hope you enjoy the video. If you need more information and if there's uh, something more that we can do, why don't you uh, contact us uh, somewhere around here. We should be seeing uh, idealsys.com is our website. Um, from there, you'll see all of the uh, contact details for our regional offices around Asia. So we're looking forward to hearing from you and I hope you enjoy the rest of this video and what we're doing on the booth. Thank you. Enjoy Broadcast Asia 2013 from the Marina Bay Sands. We're from Elemental Technologies. Uh, we're a company based in uh, Portland, in Oregon. So Elemental is a uh, video processing company. Uh, we're focused around GPU-based technology, which is an amalgamation of software-based technology and hardware-based technology, to give us the density from hardware and the flexibility of software. Using that, we can uh, do some quite clever things. Behind me, we've got HEVC, which is the next generation video codec. It's supposed to succeed H.264 to give up to 50% bandwidth reduction for the same visual quality to the user. This offers massive savings in bandwidth uh, costs and also gives far higher throughput on storage systems. We're also demonstrating 4K, uh, both live and for VOD, and that's supposed to be the next uh, consumer technology for the home. The 4K TV sets, we have one from Sony, are just starting to become available today. The main people who use the elemental technology are uh, tier one service operators, uh, pay TV cable operators, plus some of the smaller new studios for contribution. We, uh, we enable multiple apps for iPhones, iPads, Android devices, smart TVs, across multiple codecs, HLS, RCMP, HDS, and MPEG-DASH. 
our green boxes, our elemental server, is our VOD transcoder, and it offers faster than real-time transcoding. Now, primarily there's been two industries uh, in transcoding. There's been a CPU and a hardware uh, solution for high density. We amalgamate those onto a GPU. So the, the software side is our, our, our decoders. Our GPUs do the encoding. And what that can give us is great density into one RU of space. So our green box are our one RU, but they can do multiple bit rates, all faster than real time. And a statistic is one elemental server can typically replace six to 10 CPU encoders. Elemental has a, a large local presence in Asia. Uh, we've just opened our fourth office. So now we have offices in Singapore, Hong Kong, China, and India. Each of those is fully staffed with a sales engineer and a technical support engineer. So we have on-site support around Asia. Uh, and in uh, Singapore specifically, we're working with Ideal Systems. We're already deploying to customers here with them. Well, Fabrics as a company, it's well known for test and measurement products, uh, full of innovation. Um, the company itself was actually um, came into being 2005. Uh, 2008, we released our first successful handheld products, and uh, here we are, 2013, with a whole new range of uh, rack mount products to support test and measurement across the broadcast infrastructure. Um, on the ideal stand here at uh, Broadcast Asia, I've got in my hand here probably uh, the most famous of the Fabrics products. It's the Fabrics SXE. It's one of three of a, three in a range of handheld products. And what's unique about them is that they support um, generation analysis and monitoring on the one box. Uh, it also supports SD, HD, and 3G as standard. So for those broadcasters transitioning from SD right the way through to the, to the highest of standards at the moment, this box can support that transition. It's very uh, versatile to use. It's a lithium polymer battery inside. Gives you about an hour and a half with this particular model, untethered uh, operation. Though the SXA, which is our entry unit, that gives you three hours of untethered power. Um, it's a British company, uh, British built. We're very proud of the quality of our products. And uh, you'll see about three and a half thousand of these uh, worldwide. So in many broadcasters, particularly uh, in America and in Europe. Uh, in use, because it's a generator and analyzer, you can see it's got SDI in, SDI out. It also supports AES in and out and reference. And on this side, you've got easy connection to uh, upgrade facilities, to networking. It's its own web browser built in. Uh, you've got stereo headphones, and obviously you can connect it to, uh, to a power source for recharge. Um, in use, it couldn't be uh, easier to use. Uh, you just follow the colors effectively. If you need to generate a signal, you press the generator button. It gives you access to the SD, HD, uh, 3G uh, pattern sets. Um, you have 38 patterns as standard, though you can add any uh, files you like, customized files by DPX. You also got an audio generator in here, so variable frequencies, noise, etc. And you can even generate Dolby. It's the only system in the world that enables you to generate Dolby metadata. Again, quite significant if you're fault testing in that environment. On the analysis side, you've got anything from the traditional tools of waveform, vector, but this unit, the SXE, is quite unique because it has the ability to look at the eye pattern. Now, this is, uh, this is uh, the only product that's available in the world that's portable with um, uh, eye and jitter uh, pattern analysis. A lot of people know it as physical layer analysis. And the price point of this product is such that it, it really dominates uh, uh, in the marketplace. Clearly, you've got picture analysis that enables you to put cursors on and zoom. And then you have things like um, video timing uh, in the studio, ANC status, the ability to look at the various DID and SDID um, um, flags which are on the signal. Uh, you have a very sophisticated SDI analysis for CRC and EDH errors. I suppose basically what I'm trying to say that in one box, you've got all the tool sets that a modern broadcast engineer will need to check all the infrastructure that's in a, in a modern broadcast environment. Obviously, you may want to check the logging. You may want to look at the events. So it will actually log all of these. If you connect it to an open network, then you bring up any standard browser, and you'll be able to look at the logs um, um, via your PC. 
and you'll be able to control it uh, remotely via your PC as well. So a significant product. Every, every broadcaster should have this. It's a great product. Um, this was released uh, back in 2009, though we have obviously been improving it over the years. But this is probably the new revolution from Fabrics. Uh, this gives you rack mount test and measurement with all the tool sets that you've seen in handheld. But now it gives you an HDMI output. So you can either have local control using the monitoring here on the RX2000. This too has a rasterized output. But what you're seeing here is this monitor connected to this unit, the RX1000. We also do a half rack, uh, which is called the RX500. In use, you simply select the presets. And here you have another unique USP of the product, the ability to see 16 simultaneous instruments all working at the same time. So from an engineering point of view, you can literally track the fault very simply using one big display. You're not constantly going into separate, uh, separate screens. And of course, because you can personalize it, you can look at input one. This will support up to eight simultaneous channels. So that's a lot of instrumentation on the one unit. Here we're looking at channel one. You can tell by the color here. If I want to look at uh, all 16 uh, instruments, I can. If I want to look at four inputs simultaneously, you can see I can do this uh, stripping it in here. Um, the different colors give you the indication uh, of the input. So channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four, showing the primary instruments, picture waveform vector, and monitoring audio. But at any time, I can access all of the tool sets, and they're all reporting all at the same time. Great for, uh, for, event, uh, uh, for event management and logging all of, the, uh, all of the, uh, what's happening in the, in the system. Well, these uh, at the moment are supporting um, uh, SD, HD, and 3G. Uh, but the same platform, as we move into 2014, will support uh, ASI and IP infrastructures. A great buy. Fantastic. If you want to see more, then please contact Ideal Systems. Uh, Fabrics has chosen Ideal because they have support in the region and they cover many of the countries within the region. So um, they do have demo equipment. Please give them a call and let them come and show you the Fabrics difference. Well, here you see the uh, front screen or the, uh, uh, the standard screen of the SXE. And you can see here you've got generation, analysis, and logging. It gives you a complete overview of what the system is doing. So we're generating and analyzing in this particular example from the same unit. The colors give away the instrument type. So it couldn't be easier from a color point of view. Press green. Anything with green is a generated tool. And here you can see how easy it is to use the thumb switch to select the different types of uh, standards. So we go from SD all the way up to 3G, beyond 3G to 2K. So let's stay on HD just for a second. The system's clever enough to give you uh, a selection of the different color spaces and, uh, and frame rates that are associated with that. So it takes away all of the complication of uh, selecting the format that you're using. And you've got the selection of over 38 um, patterns here that you can choose. Uh, and again, they're supported by all of the standards, SD, HD, and 3G. Uh, if you want to put a moving box on, it's very simple. Select a moving box, and that will tell you if the, the, um, the video uh, signal is, is stationary or still moving. So let me just turn it off as we go forward. Not only does um, uh, video, but it obviously can generate audio as well. Here's audio pairs one and two, three and four. And this can be varied noise, white noise, etc. And you can set the dB levels to a master level. Um, also, it's the only unit in the world that will support um, Dolby streaming. So Dolby metadata here, it has CAN streams, which are on license from Dolby. And these can be used to fault check a particular system for Dolby E, Dolby D, and Dolby D+. Well, that's the generating tool. If you move across to analysis, they're the purple tools. So again, you can see the purple at the side here indicating that you're analyzing now. Here's the picture that's coming in. If the picture uh, ever goes away, then the screen will look like this, that there's no video present. As soon as you uh, enter the signal, I'll just plug this back in, and it locks immediately to the signal, tells you exactly what the format is in the top window here. Uh, more importantly, of course, you can select the cursors if you wish, which will track all the way through the system. And these can be accessed by um, using the little wheel and then pulling in the particular cursor that you need. 
Um, you can zoom in to find uh, any particular picture faults. Oh, there's a cursor there, let me just come out of that. Um, you can uh, select the line that you're interested in, so let's take it beyond the 28 so we don't get that, that annoying fault, uh, which comes in with line 28. You can zoom into a picture, and then again, this is now pixel for pixel, and if you select the picture, it's very easy for you to move around the picture to find the fault. And once you've got the cursor set on the pixel, you can use the other sophisticated tools within the unit to track what the problem is. You've obviously got waveforms, you've obviously got vector scopes, um, but here's the money shot. This is what this system is known for. It is unique as the only portable platform that supports iron jitter. This is a pathological analyzer, effectively. Uh, the competition, uh, not that they can do a portable, but anything coming close to an iPad is going to cost you probably about three times more than a fabrics unit. And this is in every major manufacturer around the world, every major broadcaster. So the quality of this eye pattern is second to none, and that's why it's won over 14 awards uh, for this particular technology. You've also got the ability to look at the jitter uh, in a signal in more detail with complete filtering across a range of, uh, a range of signal types and, and uh, cable types. You've also got cable length for measurement, again, quite a useful tool. Moving away from the traditional tools, moving into audio, here you can see you've got 16 channels of audio uh, ranging from Dolby right the way through to uh, ASI and uh, channels uh, 1 and 2, 3 and 4. So 16 channels of uh, audio you can select. And again, we've got that unique Dolby analysis. Moving on to signal uh, information. Here you can see CRC and EDH errors. This is where you'd see the flags if you found a fault uh, on your signal. So very easy to use. And then you've got uh, ANC status, so with one view, one particular frame, you can see what the signal is carrying. In this case, we can see uh, HD audio and a range of other um, um, ancillary packets. Full logging is uh, available, and of course, the logging can be accessed remotely from your desktop. This is a web server in its own right, so you simply plug in an Ethernet cable, bring up any browser of your choice, put in the IP number, and up will come this in your, in your, uh, on your monitor. And you've also got cross control. You could have a, um, a junior engineer out in the field pressing the buttons, and these would be recorded and repeated in about a three frame delay uh, on the browser, which can be uh, situated somewhere else in the facility. So there you go, a quite unique piece of equipment. It's available from Ideal uh, now in, uh, an, in Asia. <music>
so that all of the user control, content management, packaging is all done through our portal. Our portal is multilingual. It supports simplified Chinese, traditional Chinese, currently does Thai and English. We can add languages based on customer requirements and customise it very, very quickly. The POPs, again, are essentially, though, essentially managed through our YAFQ portal. Customers can have, if they have multi-sites, we can install multiple POPs and their users log into the central portal and the actual different sites can be presented as different workgroup areas, all transparently through one interface. So a client logs in, if they send a package of files, the system will actually route it to the appropriate POP. The reason for actually putting hardware on site is that a lot of clients cannot store their content in the cloud for content licensing issues. So what we do is we offer storage on the box that sits behind the client firewall. So this satisfies a lot of content licensing issues. It keeps their content within their own IT domain until the point of transfer. Transfer, of course, again, using the Aspera security features is AES-128 encrypted. We can also do file system to file system package encryption with private keys, all supported in the product. So it's very, very secure, very, very flexible. We also have a cloud instance of POP as well, which is priced differently. POP is a flat monthly service fee on site. It's monitored 24 seven by our central uh, portal. We can preemptively look at things like drive failures, space, if you're running out of space, if the machine's running hot, too busy and so forth, we can preemptively maintain these devices. So flat fee, flat monthly fee, all the transfers you can run, it's just one price. Pop Cloud is, is sold by the workgroup folder, by there's packages for upload limits and storage limits. And again, this is cloud storage, this is on site. So if you can actually handle putting your content in the cloud, if the content licensing or your licensing actually allows it, this could be the solution. Yapku is based in Hong Kong, actually in Kowloon Bay, uh, where we have our ingest facility, and our central development group, and our central engineering facility. We can be contacted at www.yapku.com or email info at yapku.com or any of the regional ideal systems offices can put you in touch and help you out with those services. We provide a, a wide range of LTO archiving solutions that range from cost-effective workstation systems up to systems which are many, many petabytes. Uh, what, one of our recent installations uh, is here in Singapore with Ideal Systems. It's at Globecast and it's part of a total EVIT system. And uh, the big thing about all of the Zendata systems is they're really easy to use uh, really easy to integrate and they just work. Um, so the uh, system at Globecast is um, used automatically by um, the EVERT system, but us, our uh, Zendata archive uh, can be used by a, a sophisticated man or it can simply be used by a user who is using Windows Explorer on a client to archive files or they could be using Finder on a Mac. Uh, Server-based solutions. Uh, which range from maybe 100 terabytes up to multiple petabytes, all have a standard file folder interface. Uh, so our approach is really making archiving to LTO just like writing to a disk-based share on the network. So a Zendata archive system has got a, a network attack storage or NAS type architecture. And so it's just really easy to implement and really easy to use. So we combine um, this ease of use um, with high performance. Uh, one of the great things about Zendaya Solutions is that uh, we really adhere to standards. Not only do you have this simple to use file folder uh, interface on the one side, but on the other side, the way we write to LTO, um, we use uh, the, uh, what now has become the uh, standard uh, way to do it, which is LTFS and uh, it was a format invented by IBM about three years ago. Pretty much everyone supports it. And what it avoids is what has happened in the past, where someone has a proprietary format that they're using to write to tape, and uh, you might be writing petabytes of material over, say, a five-year period, and 
if you have a proprietary format, you have to get it uh, back off through that same system. You can't just move the tapes from one vendor to another. And so it might take you five years to get the data on. It'll take you another five years and hundreds and th hundreds of thousands of dollars to get it off. So uh, it's essential that um, users choose LTFS. And, and we're pleased that we support it across our entire range. One of the unique things about Zendata, which no one else does, is we cover such a broad range of systems. We cover the high end. If you want a 5, 10 petabyte system, we can supply that. Uh, but also at the low end, uh, if you have a, uh, a much smaller budget and a much smaller requirement in terms of the amount of material that you want to archive, um, then we have solutions there as well. And we're competitive at both ends. So for someone who's at the high end, we're finding that a lot of people are buying small systems as well because it's just nice to have a separate system uh, which is for DR purposes or for retrieving without using their big robotic tape library. So it's that covering the range again which is another one of our advantages compared to our competitors. We have options for single drive systems, single LTO drive systems on both uh, networks and also standalone workstations. You can go with our server-based systems. You can start with a single drive. You can jump up to a small tape library. Um, and we go all the way up to um, tens of petabytes, in fact, for our largest systems. Um, you can even, on a single system, have a robotic tape library and a standalone drive. And where that comes in is uh, you might have been using your system for a year or two, and you decide with a, a tape library and you decide that you want to externalize a lot of your uh, material. You don't uh, access it that frequently, but you do from time to time. And so one of the uh, Zendata configurations is to have a robotic tape library and one or two standalone drives. And then if there's a need to restore material which has been entirely externalized, then we'll send out an email alert or give an on-screen message identifying what particular tape needs to be moved back you don't have to put it back into the robotic tape library. You can put it straight into a standalone drive, which is a very quick process. So lots of options, really, um, and the system can be customized to meet a particular uh, user's needs. We're located in um, uh, two continents. We're uh, in California, we're uh, over in the UK, and here in Asia, um, you can contact us through Ideal Systems. So Blue List Media is a London-based uh, software company. Uh, we specialise in video signal processing components and supply to the broadcast and uh, video technology industry. We've been around since about 2008 um, and really sort of ramped up our uh, software base in 2010 onwards. We take a slightly different approach to uh, traditional uh, broadcast systems manufacturers, if you like, in that all of our uh, tools are software based so there's no proprietary hardware uh, required at all so it allows systems integrators and end users to utilize standard IT infrastructure throughout uh, which greatly reduces their capital costs and allows um, uniform monitoring of systems across all their IT infrastructure. We have a range of uh, service based uh, video processing components but we're probably best known for linear ingest i.e. the conversion of SDI signals to files, which is basically where we started. We have a highly automated uh, ingest system based on FlexiCart controller and a software-based linear ingester. A linear ingester can write multiple files in real time, so it saves uh, broadcasters on transcoding um, requirements. There's no mezzanine format, so the highest possible quality in, in the delivered, file, delivered essence is, is achieved. So we're best known for that and our systems are in use with Associated Press for the digitization of their tape archive, Globecast, uh, ITV which is a commercial uh, broadcaster in the United Kingdom and uh, one or two other major broadcasters across Europe. R right now we're seeing um, uh, a lot of interest in uh, the use of our systems for archive digitization. So the Blue Lucy software set can work from end to end, to, from the digitization to the monetization of uh, archive assets. We're fairly new to Southeast Asia uh, through our partner Ideal Systems. Uh, we have a, 
a very good reference deployment for archive digitization with Yapku in Hong Kong. So there we have an end-to-end -end system which uh, comprises our BLAM, our Blue Lucy Asset Management System, which tracks um, tapes into the system. Uh, our FlexiCart controller, which allows uh, FlexiCart, which provides FlexiCart-based automation for moving of tapes uh, into VTRs. The BLM ingest service, which um, writes the media files from the um, tapes right the way through to Transcode, QC, which is provided by a partner, and then delivery. So that's a typical end-to-end -end system, and we're very much focusing on archive digitization at the moment. It's a problem not just in, in Southeast Asia, but across the world. Lots of broadcasters have built up vast tape archives, and uh, hitherto it's been an expensive and complicated business to to get that, monetize that material, or at least preserve that material. So these archives have been getting bigger and bigger. Uh, people are deferring the digitization pro projects. But with our approach, which is all software-based, which greatly reduces costs, is highly automated, we're seeing more and more uh, broadcasters starting to look at these archives. And one or two service providers, like Yapku, are popping up and offering it as a managed service for, for uh, content owners. We provide the software on a number of bases, um, and we're looking at more archives in this region. Uh, hi, my name is Mark Moore from Everts. Uh, what we're showing here at the booth is uh, our contribution encoding systems. Starting here, we have a JPEG 2000 encoder. Uh, one of the features of this is we have the lowest latency in the industry, about uh, two or three frames. Uh, along here, we have our CXP platform. So we're showing uh, different uh, encoders from MPEG-2 to H.264. Um, we're also doing bulk encoding, so we have eight uh, HDs in a single 1RU, as well as 16 SDs in a single 1RU. What we have here is our ATP system, which is a, a multi-service video transport solution. So it's basically any signal over any network. Um, we have a fully integrated um, software that goes with it, so you can do scheduling, and mapping for uh, networked video transport solutions. We also are highlighting uh, basically all of our infrastructure products. So we have a full range of fiber transmitters and receivers, um, as well as uh, SFP-based uh, high-density fiber uh, network solutions. At the end here, we have our IPX platform. So we're showing um, ASI over IP as well as networking IP over uh, a full infrastructure. And one of the areas where we're, where we're uh, excelling in this is for 4K. In a studio or a production environment, you can take uh, all of your 4K signals over, over 10 gig backbone. Uh, what we're showing on this side of the booth is our uh, distribution encoding solutions. So what we have here is a, a H.264 encoder as well as our end screen encoder, which uh, We'll do several uh, resolutions for different playout devices. Behind me here is the CSM, which is our compression service manager. Basically, this is part of our SNMP management system, and it uh, highlights how you can manage a pool of resources of encoders, so for failover applications. So welcome to Everts, we're actually showing our three screen solution which is the front end of the facility of the future. Um, what the three screens is, entails, it ties in Mediator which is our content asset management system with Vislink, our NMS system that manages the equipment using SNMP and ties it in using VUE from an operator perspective. So what we see is a departure from the traditional facility in which you have multi-viewers, multiple control panels, to a point where now you have three screens in which everything you need to do to manage material in a playout is done through these three screens. Mediator, utilizing a web interface, provides the information for a playout. So what we see here is the front end of playtime, which is the automation perspective, uh, the automation module of Mediator, to allow us to generate playlists for the multiple channels and that uh, you can use for playout comprehensive web interface that allows us to search on different material, add material, and as well as view various materials to ensure that we are looking and, and playing out the correct of content. On this side, 
we have VisLink, which is our NMS. Uh, a comprehensive NMS that allows you to look at all the various devices within the actual chain and monitor them through SNMP. As well as not only giving you the fact that you have alarms, I can actually lay out different views in which I show the system from a very top level and it allows us to drill down to see the various signals to the point where I actually have the chain view of the actual video path and be able to identify quickly where the fault is and resolve the issue. Other elements we can utilize VisLink is to be able to do things like auto response, uh, IRM and CSM, where we actually add intelligence to reactions of failures. So in the case of automation or auto response, we can react and switch to a default path when we detect a failure. All of it is controlled through VIEW. VIEW is our customizable user interface that allows us to start providing to the operator tools that they would utilize to do the task at hand based on a series of different widgets that can be set onto the desktop. And in this case, we are showing from a playout perspective controls for multiple channels utilizing mediator widgets in which I can select different channels, select the actual controls of the channel playout itself, look at the playlist of the channel, and do some searches in video of, or a video representation of the channel and do searching on material that's on the playlist, all from the Opera interface. I can then also provide interfaces to the ingest clients so they can actually control the ingest clients utilizing this tool. Other devices that you can add on to is router control, multi-viewer control, procking control, the various infrastructure devices. And again, all centralized to a single location that is very intuitive for the operator. What you see here is Dreamcatcher, our foray into the whole replay uh, system market. Um, what we've done is we've taken an approach to look at replay from a different perspective. We're looking at ways to make the ability to tell stories a lot more effective, a lot more efficient and quicker than what you have in the market space today. Dreamcatcher is a system that utilizes various, uh, or utilizes a, um, that can be scaled from a small system that is a four, system, four channel system to a very large system that can be multiple of 20 or 30 camera system. Um, the core of the system is a Linux based uh, product uh, that um, gives us also a 10 gig backbone to interconnect to different devices. What we see here is two different versions. We've got a 4K version, which is an eight channel recorder player that's got three gig HDSDI that can be configured as a six by two, four by four, or a one by seven, or seven by one, so in terms of seven inputs, one output, four inputs, four outputs. There's a 2K version, which is an HDSD recorder player, six channels, again, configured to be a four by four in, two out, three in, three out, and any other way you want. One of the elements that comes in with Dreamcatcher is in fact a built-in multi-viewer. So what we can do is connect the device, DVI into it, and we have a built-in multi-viewer that shows us our inputs and outputs. In fact, the front end of Dreamcatcher is our view. So again, we are able to customize what the operator sees. Not only can they get the multi-viewer, but I can also add and drag in things like router control, procking controls, and such. So I can build a custom interface that allows them to now add additional tools to allow them to complete the task at hand, which in this case is doing replays. The Dreamcatcher has a traditional uh, desktop controller, which allows us to create, scrub through content, and create clips. Again, a very comfortable or a very familiar control interface to operators that are out there today. So the learning curve is very, very short in terms of being able to utilize and control to use Dreamcatcher to create clips very easily. So what we have is the ability to switch between two different outputs. I can start then creating clips very easily. So in this case, what we'll do is we'll simply scrub through, do a capture, mark in, mark out, and clip it. One of the elements we have here is a tagging window. One of the big concepts within Dreamcatcher is very important is metadata. The more metadata I capture about the event, the more information I can use to create playlists, search for clips, search across the database. So that becomes a very com important component of the actual clip. Now, within the controller, we have an updated interface in which we've also incorporated a touch screen. So in this case, I can play the clip, control the speed, or I can also utilize a different camera angle 
to maybe per perhaps capture the replay in a more uh, amical way. Okay. So in this case, we can see the player running out and that stuff. So we have the different camera angles. Now, one of the other elements is a video or a perspective of actually capturing different clips and such. So in this case, I can quickly create playlist. Very easy by simply dragging and dropping clips. So in this case, we'll go to this one, take this clip, drag it over. And if we have any other ones, we can simply drag and drop them into the playlist as well. So the ability to create playlists is very easy. So let's go ahead and add some more clips. Okay. Mark in. Let's just go mark in. Mark out. Clip. Enter some information. Save. Okay, so we've created another clip in here, stored it in a location. We're gonna add that through here, okay? In fact, let's go add one more clip. Let's go back to record train, scroll back, mark in, mark out, clip. Out, throw that here, save it. Now, as you can see, we've quickly added that clip in. Go to the top of the playlist, hit play, and now I've actually quickly generated a playlist assembled from the different clips, and I can transition through the different clips through here. Okay. One of the unique features that's part of Dreamcatcher is a concept of a mosaic look. So let's go back to our record train. This particular clip, we'll take that on air, shows a play at first place, at first base, that is very close. Okay, so let's look at that same play from a different camera angle. Hit play, and then we control the speed to see the replay going through, and in fact, he is safe. Well, let's look at it our third camera angle. Scrub back, control, run it through, and now let's slow it down. So from multiple camera angles, we can actually see that the replay is there. So let's see all three of them at once. Let's go into our mosaic mode. So now we're gonna enable mosaic view, which will allow us to see all the camera angles or three camera angles at once. Select the menu, select mosaic. I'm gonna pull up my box. We're gonna look at camera angles four, three, and one in which I'm gonna then make some final adjustments. And then when I hit play, I'm gonna see the play from all the different angles at once to see if in fact how close that play was. And in fact, you can see I'm controlling all the angles at once with the single controller to see in fact all the different angles. So the savings in terms of being able to do this is enormous. This was done immediately, can be done right out, right on the live. If you were to do this in a traditional manner, this could be a few minutes trying to synchronize multiple operators and go through a production switcher to enable the DVE squeezes and such. So again, a very flexible way to tell the story from a different manner. In some cases in the Super Bowl, you had Coach A, which was Brother One, Coach B on the other side, which was uh, the opposition coach, and the play in the middle, in which we were able to see the reaction of both coaches at the same time for a play that happened on the field. One of the other elements that we have in uh, 4K mode as the ability to take a 4K image where we've got four 3 gig signals coming into the device and we output a 1080p signal. And what Dreamcatcher does in the 4K mode, it allows us to do things like zoom in, track the plays and such. So I take the full 4K res, zoom into a particular play, output that as HD, and then track that play by creating a flight path for that play. So it allows us to utilize 4K in the production side of things, but show replay from a different perspective with higher clarity in HD. Thank you.